So welcome everyone to um, the uh, anthropology department's, the site, um, site in the anthropology department speaker series. We're welcoming today um, Professor Hassan Rashik from Mohammed the Sixth University in Rabat, uh, Morocco. Um, he is going to speak to us today on decolonizing anthropological knowledge um, um, from the Moroccan perspective and his uh, experience of participating in that process. Um, he is um, he has worked uh, as an anthropologist in Morocco for many many years. Um, he's worked on the interpretation of sacrificial ritual, on social changes in rural environments, but also on uh, the use of ideology uh, in uh, anthropological knowledge making and other forms of knowledge making. Um, and he has uh, numerous books and articles on this topic. Um, so we're very 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 excited to welcome. Um, Professor Rashik to speak to us today. Uh, so I will turn the time over to him and let him uh, share his uh, the presentation that he has prepared. Thank you again for all of you for joining us um, wherever you may be. Okay. Uh, first, I express my warm thanks to Becky Chaltis, my colleague, Professor Becky Chaltis, the Department of Anthropology, Rutgers University for giving me, for giving us an opportunity to share some ideas related, as you say, to decolonization of anthropological knowledge. Thanks all of you for coming, for being with us. We often forget persons who are close to us. I'm not going to do that. So thanks to the university, Mohammed Six staff for their help. I will start, I need help, Abdeladi. What to do? I understand, j'ai compris. Okay, thank you. Good. So I, I will start by recalling that the recent history of anthropology has been marked by the entry of uh, on this, onto the scene of the new protagonists. I mean the researchers who were or who are citizens of the former colonized countries. And I'm one of them. These researchers have been confronted with colonial legacy. In Morocco, the issue of decolonization legacy was raised in the 1960s, a few years after the independence of the country. However, the issue of decolonization of colonial legacy was raised in the, oh, I'm sorry, a few years after the independence. However, the issue of decolonization does not only concern so-called indigenous anthropologists, anthropologists at home, local anthropologists, and so on. It concerns all researchers who are interested in the history of anthropology. By the way, I do not consider, this is a slight comment on Morocco, on the, the word Morocco in the title. I do not consider myself only as an anthropologist at home. I'm at the same time close and distant to, to my country. I'm culturally close as a Moroccan and methodologically distant as an anthropologist. That's another story for another presentation. So I have divided my presentation into, into parts. The first one deals with the major theoretical orientations that shaped the decolonization of the colonial Anthropology. Can you see the slide? Is it okay? Is it, is it clear? It's okay? Good. I don't use many slides, you know. It's, I'm not a slide man. Anyway, it helps. It helps me to, to organize my, my ideas, and I hope it helps also the audience to follow my, my, my presentation. So the first one, the first orientation, Theoretical orientation. I, I, I won't repeat theoretical many times. It's 
theoretical orientation. The first orientation deals with the major theoretical. Yes, okay, sorry. The first one deals with the major orientation that shaped the canonization of colonial anthropology. This is the first part. You have the four orientations. I will comment on them. And in the second part, I will show briefly how I used the concept of ethnographic situation to study colonial anthropology. So it will take 45 minutes, 55 minutes maximum. So let's begin with, with the first one, decolonizing means unmasking ideological deviation. The orientation can be summarized as follows. Decolonizing the anthropological knowledge consists in unmasking its prejudices, its ideological de de deviations that distort the history and the culture of the colonized people. To build a decolonized knowledge, Abdel Kabir Khatibi, a Moroccan sociologist and novelist later on, Abdel Al Arwi, a Moroccan historian, and other scholars I will mention later on. These scholars examined to what extent the social sciences have participated to the policy of mystification distortion of the Moroccan culture and history, I mean colonial social sciences. They aimed to be no longer prisoners to the colonial image of their past. They tried to purge the vocabulary is very rich, it's very significant. I, I have no time to comment on each, each word, you know, uh, but, you know, I just rely on on you to, to push the comments on, this, on, on, on these words. They try to purge the national history and culture from colonial defects, distortions, falsifications, mystification, and so on. The principle is simple. Decolonize colonial knowledge, move the veil and mask and veil, and you get what Moroccan reality was, what really, sorry, what Moroccan reality really was. Let me give some examples of these theoretical deviations. As Okay, just the the, the, the micro is okay. So I, I I will give some some examples of these ideological deviations, or as I prefer to call them, colonial ideological orientations. This short is very list, of course, you can imagine the short is, is longer. This list is not exhaustive. Deviation one, Islam opposed to paganism of the Berbers. Two, opposed to tribes. I avoided vernacular and vernacular terms, machzen, siba, etc., because it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not uh, the issue here. The Berbers opposed to the Arab, deviation three. The nomads opposed to the sedentary people, deviation four. And finally, customary law versus Islamic law. And as, as I said, as I have said, the, the list is very longer than that. I will comment only on the two first deviations. Let us keep in mind that the common point, the common features of these ideological deviations is their exaggeration of the political, religious, linguistic, ethnic divisions 
of Morocco. Abdullah Al-Arwi showed that the political principle of divide to rule nourished the colonial knowledge. We don't have time to comment on the whole list, as I said. So for deviation one, the study of religious beliefs and practices focused on the pre-Islamic period, on the pagan survivors, on what was called the superficial Islam of Moroccans. According to Abdul Kabir Khatibi, short-circuiting the heavy influence of Islam translated the dream of the assimilation of Berber population. Quickly, the, seventh, the second deviation is related to the opposition between the central government and the tribes. German Ayesh, a historian, Moroccan historian, drew attention to the excess of this opposition associated with the violence and the brutality of the central government seen as a parasitic power. To German Ayesh, the central government did not just collect taxes, it performed other social and political functions, such as the arbitrarian in, tri in tribal conflicts. He also showed that the central government was necessary to the tribes, especially in times of drought. I turn now to the main criticism of the decolonization of colonial knowledge in terms of ideological deviations. And these are crit internal criticisms, it's not my criticism. Being a nationalist, anti-colonialist implies also prejudices, probably more commendable compared to the colonialist one. But the fact remains that from the methodological view, point of view, there are still prejudices. For instance, nationalist prejudices lead to approach the decolonization of colonial knowledge as a negative recourse. The scheme is the following. You say P1, which is false. We say P2, which is true. And you say that, and there is a negative record, a negative thesis, and it goes, it goes on like this. We noticed how the nationalist values direct, directed the criticism toward prejudices, colonial prejudices related to the cleavages, to the divisions affecting the unity of the country, Berbers versus Arab and so on. Abdel al we demanded an in-depth critique without complacency of others, colonial, and the oneself, nationalist Moroccans, etc. Otherwise, one will be content with placing alongside a colonial history, the nationalist history. Still, according to Abdel al it is necessary, and this is a good idea, very, very relevant idea, it is necessary to distinguish between the ideological use of a thesis and the thesis itself. We suggested to discuss, above all, the colonial thesis and not their use. The decolonization of colonial thought was often based on schematic postulates. There is a true reality, culture, history, politics which is veiled by the colonial prejudices, and it suffices to remove, to decolonize this veil in order to reach the truth. This reminds what Karl Popper wrote about the positivism of Francis Bacon and August Comte, calling it an optimistic epistemology. It's war in Morocco.
I will resume. This reminds what Popper wrote about the positivism of Francis Bacon and August Comte, calling it an opistimate, opistimistic epistemology. Bacon and Comte assume that the prejudices veil the reality. And once these prejudices are eliminated, the truth manifests itself. This is the scheme of decolonization in the 1960s and 1970s. It belongs now to the history, but it was an interesting intellectual process for us, for our generation, but maybe for the next generation. Slide five, okay. The second orientation that aimed to the deconstruction of the colonial knowledge seems more complex, but unfortunately, it did not go beyond the programmatic level. Referring to Jacques Rida, Michel Foucault, and others, Khatiba approached the process of decolonization as a destruction, deconstruction which is, uh, maybe you have, you have the definition, it's a short definition of deconstruction, as an intellectual operation which consists in bringing out the constitution of concepts and their framework according to the laws which command them from the outside to the inside, from the social to intrinsic discourse. According to Khatibi, Khatibi the sociology, of decolonization of the Arab world consists in carrying out a double task. The first one consists on the deconstruction of what he called logocentrism and ethnocentrism. It had to target a broader field which is not limited solely to the knowledge produced by the colonial power but all the discourses which participate to, to participate in imperial domination. This is a broad field for the concept of deconstruction and decolonization. The second task consists in a critique of knowledge and discourses developed by the different Arab societies about themselves. In this case, the process of decolonization is not limited to the colonial literature. It also involves the knowledge produced by Arab intellectuals, Arab intellectuals by the former colonized countries on their own societies. Slide so says I'm a bit frustrated because I should tell many things, but in quickly. Orientation, the third orientation, and the fourth orientation emphasize the, rela the relativity of truth. Scholars who defended these orientations have abandoned the approach of colonial legacy in terms of truth and good in on the one hand, and falsity and evil on the other hand. Fanny Colonna, French Algerian sociologist, and Ibrahimi. Algerian sociologists proposed what they called le bon usage de l'ethnographie colonial, the good use of colonial ethnography. They showed with supporting examples how colonial researchers brought to answers to false questions. It seems paradoxical, but it's a way to to, to deal with, 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 with colonial literature. Najib Boudrbada, lawyer and sociologist, wrote Les mauvaises intentions ne produisent pas à coup sûr une mauvaise science. This is my translation. Bad intentions, it's really approximative translation. Bad intentions do not necessarily produce bad sides. 
From these perspectives, false or bad ideas and unworth interests can inspire relevant descriptions. Popper again wrote that a pseudoscience may happen to stumble on the truth. In any case, it is not because such a theory is contaminated by ideological prejudices that it necessarily leads to a false ethnography. To a false ethnography. Okay, orientation four, also quickly. Other scholars have proposed to examine the colony literature in order to separate the grains, the wheat, from the chaff, to distangle the truth from the falsity. I quote Mohammed Mohammed Bougali, sociologist, psychanalyst. We remain convinced that despite the colonial abuses that Moroccan ethnography and psychology have experienced, they can still be royal ways to recover our dynamic vestiges in order to try to penetrate, to penetrate them later, better. Bougali, yes, 1988. Okay. All good so far? Okay, it's quick, but I, I should be quick, you know. Many, many topics deserve further comments, but I'm happy with that. Sorry? Can she have your ability? Okay. Ethnographic now, I, okay. I, I will take a few minutes uh, to talk about my, my experience and my approach to colonial anthropology. Frankly, I, I went the opposite way. I started by doing field work, by using, examining, criticizing the colonial ethnographies but related to my topic and related to theoretical issues and ethnographic issues. I vaguely thought that instead of talking about the different blacksmiths, I should start by becoming a blacksmith in a different ways. Now, I can theoretically argue that it's relevant to start by the bottom, from the bottom, excuse me. A few years later, after my ethnographic and fieldwork experience, I directly confronted the work of colonial anthropologists. This is the object of L'Esprit du Terrain and uh, Le Proche de and other, 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 other papers. I don't have to talk about the process, and it would be boring to, to do so. Uh, I will just briefly sketch the result. To avoid a selective and passionate approach to colonial anthropological knowledge, I have proposed under the name of ethnographic situation, a comprehensive approach that could be applied to colonial and non-colonial anthropological works. In fact, the ethnographic situation or the ethnographic situation approach is a cluster, a system of concepts. Okay. The first three concepts correspond to, uh, to three categories of orientations, cultural, ideological, and theoretical. The last one, the ethnographic encounter is a kind of a crossroad of the mentioned concepts. The metaphor sounds good. We have four dimensions. 
Now, let me say a few words about each of these dimensions. The cultural orientations refer to the attitude, the beliefs, the values that an anthropologist acquire, internalize as an ordinary member of his society. American culture, Irish culture, French culture, and so on. Christian, Jew, Muslim, agnostic. This might be related to ethnocentrism, the process of judging alien societies according to the standards of one's culture or one's society. The ideological orientations refer to a system of ideas and beliefs that refer to politics and support political actions, legitimation, mobilization, and so on. Unfortunately, the decolonization of collective, of colonial knowledge has focused in ideological dimension. To overcome this shortcoming, we should keep in mind that the most interesting colonial anthropologists were dual hatted. They have a dual rule. I don't know if the, this translation to in the metaphor in, in French, double casquette. I, I, I don't know. Anyway, they were dual hatted. They have a dual role. That of the servant of a state, which they did, did not hide, and that of the academic researcher. It is for this reason that the study of theoretical dimension is relevant. Whatever his interests, his ideology, a colonial anthropologist, as many academic researchers, I'm not excluding myself, refers to a theoretical tradition that is authoritative to his eyes and to which he borrows his question, issues, lexicon, postulate, hypothesis, and so on. Whether being colonial or not, an anthropologist who is inspired, inspired by evolutionism or evolutionary theory was oriented like Dutte, Westermark, and others was oriented towards a particular type of questioning, such as the origin of the phenomenon to be studied, the search for its survivors, and a linear conception of history ranging from the simple to the complex, as you know. As you know, the theoretical orientations inspire and guide the facts to observe and do it to observe them. Edmond Dutey, was inspired by evolutionary theory. He studied pre-Islamic beliefs and rise and showed the fragility of Islam. By reducing colonial anthropology to its ideological dimension, we lost sight on its theoretical dimension, and especially the articulation of this theoretical dimension and the ideological one. How do they, for instance, you know, shift from evolutionary theory to the colonial use of this theory to focus on pre-Islamic or survivors, Berber, pagan religion, and so on. A comprehensive approach allows us to understand how an anthropological theory turns into an ideology. And this is one of my projects because I worked on how religion turns into an ideology. And this is another project to show how social sciences within Amazigh ideology, Arabic ideology, and colonial ideology. To me, it's the same object, I mean, from the methodological point of view. In this case, it is this process of the ideologization of anthropology that should be described and interpreted. Social position, this is the 
ideological, the, so, of, sorry, this is the sociological dimension of the ethnographic situation. I was often bothered by the category of the coronary researchers because it's a vague category that put the colonial researchers in the same basket. In fact, we have many social positions. The traveler, the scientific explorer, the resident researcher, and the academic researcher. And the list is not, is not, is longer. We cannot put on the same level the loose ethnography of Edmond Dutay, who made short trips in Morocco to Morocco between 19 and 96, and the ethnography of Jacques Berg, who, reside, who resided for years, for years, no, too many years among the tribes he studied and administered. George Hardy and Louis Brino were also civil servants, colonial civil servants, that were responsible for the education policy. They criticized James Fraser and rejected overtly the evolutionist theory that studied humanity, as you know, as, as a whole. They were rather influenced by collective psychology that allowed them to study the Moroccan mentality, the Moroccan soul, the Moroccan culture, and so forth, and so forth, and so on. Related to their political position, the search for the universal was incompatible with the sake of empirical knowledge of the colonized people. Another aspect of the social position of the colonial anthropologists is that many of them were publishing books and articles in academic journals. They aim to be recognized by their peers. It would be reductive to pay attention only to their colonial interests. They had also academic interests. Edmond Dutay, again, I choose Dutch Edmond Dutay to not, to not go in many directions. Dutay, who resolutely contributed to the colonial expansion of France, was in contact with Marcel Mauss and the journal founded by Emile Durkheim, Planet Sociologique. His book on magic and religion in North Africa was presented as a, an academic book. I do not see anything colonial in his application of Herbert and or Hubert in French, Hubert and Mauss's theory of sacrifice to rituals performed in the Maghreb. We can say similar things about Robert Montan, his book, Berber and Le Marzen, was his PhD thesis, defended at the Sorbonne University. Jacques Berg was in touch with his, this prestigious circle of Paris, Marcel Mauss, Louis Gernet, Marcel Bloch, and others. The ethnographic encounter, it's the fourth dimension of the ethnographic, the concept of ethnographic situation. The ethnographic encounter, here we reach the last crucial dimension of the ethnographic situation. Crucial because the concept of ethnographic encounter involves essentially face-to-face -face relations, interactions between the anthropologist and the subject studied. There are many types of interactions that are affected, that are affected by cultural, ideological, and theoretical orientations, the social position of the anthropologists. I will choose two examples. The length of the stay and the ability to speak the language of the, the, the people being studied. 
So there are many words that describe, would describe the social interactions with people. Antipathy, empathy. Antipathy is unusual. It's related to colonial context. Empathy, respect, arrogance, acceptance, rejection, exclusion, and so on. Edmond Dutey, once again, noted frequently his feelings of antipathy that Moroccans showed towards him as a Christian. He felt that they perceived in him as a, uh, they perceived him in him an impure, unusual, and dangerous person. This supposed antipathy of Moroccans is combined with the effective arrogance of, of Dutey. To him, there was little to learn from Moroccans whose beliefs are primitive and false. As we often associate anthropology with sympathy, empathy, and respect, it was to me interesting to study this kind of colonial ethnography that was produced in a context characterized by antipathy and arrogance. Regarding the length of, of stay, Dute may, made very short stays in Morocco. Robert Montan did field work and interviewed people. Jacques Berg lived among the tribes as a colonial civil servant. The travel of Dute, Charles de Foucault, and others, and the scientific mission were elementary forms of fieldwork that involved ephemeral interactions with people. By contrast, Jacques Berg, as I mentioned earlier, had dual social position. By virtue of his colonial role, he had a direct and continuous access to places, people, and archives. For the resident, colonial observer, the space in which he circulates is first of all a space of authority. It is a space linked to a colonial function and it was not a field work in the anthropological sense of the term. In regards to local language, the colonial power encouraged the civil and the military officials to learn and speak either classical Arabic or one of the different dialects, Moroccan dialects. For instance, Dutty and Berg spoke classical Arabic and little Berber. And my question is how this limitation affects the ethnography of Berber communities. It has nothing to do with colonial only. Colonial dimensions, it's, it's a relevant dimensions and we can reproach to uh, Jacques Berg to not mention in his structure social, the, the word at last, his study, well known study among Berbers, six hour tribes, to not mention the colonial context. The whole book is written as the, if there is no, or there was no colonial context. We can reproach him, of course, this dimension, but it's not the only one. This is my, my, my. My, my perspective. These are simple examples of the ethnographic encounter that might affect and shape colonial ethnography in different ways. Anthropologists who have fieldwork experience are able, are able now to ask these kind of questions related to the ethnographic encounter to the ethnographic situation and not reduce the study of colonial anthropology to its ideological dimension. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for your, uh, for your presentation. Um, some very thoughtful uh, and, and historically based analyses. Um, I, I, I really appreciated what you shared. Um, let's, uh, let's open this up to some questions. Um, 
please, um, if you would like to ask any questions, um, please raise your hand and, um, and I, will, I will call on you. Um, you can also post your questions in the chat. Uh, David, please. Uh, yes, thank you very much for a, a wonderful presentation. I have a question that relates a little bit to Moroccan history, um, and you'll have to forgive my ignorance of, of, of most of it here. Um, so I, I wonder if and it has to do with how one defines colonialism and how one treats it as exceptional. So you sit, laid out a sort of colonial phase and a nationalist phase, but I wonder where the kind of Moroccan imperial phase fits into that. And I'm discussing the uh, occupation of Western Sahara from 1975 onwards. It, is there a kind of Moroccan colonial anthropology or social science or administration or something that arises from 1975 onwards? I, I'd be very interested in how the anthropologist goes from being uh, in, the, in the colony to then being in the metropole and, uh, and engaging subjects who are colonial subjects from 1975 onwards. Um, so I, I wonder if you can comment on any aspect of that, uh, Dr. Recci. It should exist to comment on it. I have no idea about this process. The historians were involved in, some of them, not all of them, were involved in you know, legitimizing the Moroccan of the Sahara. But as far as I know, colonial Moroccan, colonial anthropology, I have no idea. But if, if you have some examples, please help me with that. I don't have any idea. No, I, I don't have any examples, certainly. Thank you. I think part of what is the issue here is that there's, um, I don't know of much uh, anthropology or ethnography coming out of uh, out of anything south of anything related to the Western Sahara. So I I, I know that there are some. So I know Sarah Dubel works on um, some Western Sahara um, uh, poetry. She's an ethnographer uh, in Florida, um, but again, I'm not sure of anything. From the Moroccan, from the Moroccan nationalist side, that thinks about ethnographically instantiating a claim or making claims about that. Um, I, I don't know, um, Susan or, or um, Deborah, do you have any thoughts on that or, as well? Um, or Hassan, um, I don't know of anything. Really, I, I have no idea. Frankly, I, I, I have no idea. There are many anthropologists who work on on, 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 on on the Sahara on the tribes of the Sahara. Uh, but really, in, 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 in the normal scientific way. So uh, you, you, you can help me with that. You know, I'm, I'm very. But if you mean, and I don't know, if you mean that with this imperial, with this interest of Moroccan power in the African sub-Saharan countries. There is some complicity between anthropologists or scholars and the state. Do you mean that? Well, that was that was really part of my question. Uh, you know, we fault the uh, the French anthropologists for operating within a colonial context, perhaps in very prejudiced ways, um, and for being uncritical or even unaware of that colonial context. Um, so I wonder if the same thing may happen, and in, in maybe not in Morocco, maybe in other non-European colonial contexts okay. today. I think that's something that needs to be taken up, I would suspect, uh, using perhaps using the framework that Professor Vashik has pointed out, right? Thinking about things in terms of the personal positionality and the commitments that scholars have, in addition to the theoretical and ideological and, um, and cultural uh, frameworks that they bring to their analyses. Um, it's a great question, something should be explored. 
other uh, any other questions? I think there's one in the chat. Let's see. Um, Zainab Gersel has a um, a question that she posted in the chat. Um, she yes. said, "Is the uh, she said is the opposite of uh, Budarbala's quote also true? It seems to me that perhaps good intentions do not necessarily produce good science." I think this may be one of the reasons to not confuse ideological dimensions of research with theoretical dimensions. Did I understand correctly? Could you please differentiate these two dimensions a little more? You read it very quickly, Vicky. Uh, <laughs> Sorry, my apologies. Um, so, so she said, um, is the opposite of Budrabala's quote also true? Could good intentions not necessarily produce good science? What well, this is this is this is not my idea. This is the the perspective, you know, because when I'm not in, in, in this scheme, in this perspective, opposing truth and falsity. Mm. My uh, uh, as I said. Ethnographic, the ethnographic situation is just to explain, to understand, and understanding instead of decolonizing is, is something which I, I, I contend. Just and you know what, what is what, what, what is the underlying features, the underlying scheme of this ethnography? It's what I did in Roproche Luanta without saying this is true or not true. Even when I criticize Clifford Gears on studying his bazaar, it's not in terms of true or not. It's in, in terms of what is the generalization, what is the status of generalization, how you can, as an anthropologist, speak about Moroccans. How do you do that? What are the steps from the description, interpretation of the bazaar, or whatever, or saint or local saint, to a judgment to an interpretation of Moroccan culture. It has nothing to do with, is it true or not? I'm, I'm not in this paradigm. But if I dealt with this, it is just because it belongs to the intellectual history to the, the decolonization in Morocco. Is it false or not? This is the ideological deviations. And we shift to partial truths, which is, Okay, we don't reject that, but we will try to, to select a good ethnography. Laos did a good ethnography of the tent, of habitations, of, of uh, marriage ceremonies, etc., and they can use them. And to me, there is no specific scheme or model according to which we can speak about colonial culture. The same ethnographic approach, concept of ethnographic situation approach, I can apply it to colonial knowledge, to Clifford Gates, and to myself in my last book, Devenir Anthropologue Chez Soi. So, Hassan Rashid, yes, what is your po social position? As a man, as a urban, grow up urban, and so on. What is your theoretical schemes? How do you convert from this paradigm to another paradigm? And so on. So this is my, my, my perspective. It's the, 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 there, there were many perspectives, ideological, social scientist, or philosophical perspective, deconstruction. This is a broad theory and concept. It has nothing to do only with, 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 with colonial, with colonial knowledge. Deconstruction, you can deconstruct medieval thought, you can deconstruct whatever. Okay? Even if, that's, this is another story. Right? What is my position on this kind of intellectual uh, process? So this is, this is, it's not, I don't know if, if the scheme of truth and, and 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 falsity would be 
for comprehensive approach. Of course, I, I can say this is not true. You, you said it's 1930, and I can say, oh, it's false, it's 1933. This is, but this is another level. But when it comes to anthropology, when it comes to theoretical approach, all approaches are, you know, we can criticize them, departing from their own theoretical foundations, and of course, departing from my own theoretical foundations. Thank you, um, Susan. Um, this is more a contemporary question since you've been teaching and seeing non-Moroccan anthropologists come to Morocco for over 30 years. Are there changes in uh, theories, approaches? Uh, are there new topics? Do you see an increase in collaboration between Moroccan anthropologists and non-Moroccan anthropologists? Well, uh, this it's a very interesting issue, but we should we, we should both work on it. It's not. It's not you know? <laughs> but I, I, I will answer. I, I'm not escaping. I'm, I'm not escaping the answer. I I raised this the similar question in in Safro when. Clifford Gies, 2002, was there. And uh, it was a, an homage to, 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 to Clifford Gies. And I had, I read a paper, and I mean read it, like, more like this. Read a paper in French entitled Comment lire des textes sur sa propre culture how to read texts, I mean foreign texts, Gears text, on your own culture. And what, what, what was the difference between reading, Hassan Rashiq reading, Gears work on Bali, on uh, the state theater, on uh, the bazaar uh, in Bali and so on, and his study on the bazaar, on Safro Bazaar. And one of the collaboration, it's, it's, it's an impersonal and really distant collaboration, is how someone like Kirch or you or, or Becky, Deborah, when I read them, there is something I learned, and I say that many times. I learned a lot. And the topic of this presentation, it's not because I am Moroccan that I have my hand in my pocket and circulate and know everything. I don't know everything. I'm not an anthropologist at all. This is limited. I was, I have this vertige, huh? cultural shock. I had it when I worked in, in, uh, within the Berber communities, within nomadic. So this is the first thing that I have no privilege being Moroccan to understand Moroccan culture. So I should hear Susan, Becky, Deborah, Hildred Geertz, Rosen, and so on. So this is the first, the, 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 the first thing you know, to, to, to share. So you have your prejudices. You come with your prejudices. OK, that's OK. And, and, and I described prejudices of Hildred Gears and about Nisba or Clifford Gears or Nisba and so on. The prejudice that if you, if, if you are here in Morocco, you should be an Orientalist, and this is Gears, and write Nisba is Nisba relativity in Moroccan Arabic classical. We don't care. When Moroccans speak about Nisba, they don't care for relativity. Or, this is, but still, I learned a lot. You know, when, when, when someone, Berg also, also, you know, Jack Berg, when he finds 
a translation in American or in English vocabulary language or in French language. You know, Zham, Zham in Safro. Do you know the, the translation of, of it? the maze? It's not a translation, it's an interpretation of Zham. Me, I can say La Foule or, uh, you know, I don't know, La Foule, something like that. And this kind of, you know, it's like a mirror. Some, you know, it's like you know, anyone can see something which is not, you know, which cannot be seen by the other. This is a kind of collaboration. Now, when it comes, you know, to institutional collaboration, it's very loose. Very, very, very loose. We have personal ties, but difference. And I struggled a lot to establish institutional with you know American uh, embassy, etc. But it doesn't it doesn't work. I mean, it's, it was in the nineties and two thousand, and after you know, I just I, I, I just give up. So yeah, there, there are many, you know, you, you, I, I, we have examples, you know, uh, with, uh, with Susan, with Susan Osman, with, uh, with, uh, with Deborah, but it's personal ties, loose personal ties, distant collaboration, virtual collaboration, call it whatever, but we need it. If it's, if it's this, the, your question, yes, we need collaboration. Not only with Americans, with French or Spanish or, or Algerian or Tunisian. And we have, all of us have something to gain from this, this collection, all of us. Does it answer your question, Susan? Partially? Yes, but I'm I'm also interested because you've been so crucial to anthropology in decades. If you've seen changes in in subjects that people are looking at in field work places, in um, um, choice of approaches, it, it, it will be a long answer. Okay, you know, <laughs> pick I, one. <laughs> no, there are many. There are many. So the, 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 the one of you know uh, anthropologists, Moroccan anthropologists, used to work in rural areas because there is a history of that. You know, institut veterinaire Paul Pasco and so on. You know, it's not when uh, when I took the train. The train was. Was, was in rural areas, it was not in urban areas. And one of the things, uh, but I appreciate is the move from rural areas, from tribal areas to Safro, to Bejad with uh, Eckerman, uh, to Saleh with, I, I don't think, I, I, I forgot the name. It's not, no, it's not uh, Kenneth Brown, yeah, with Kenneth Brown and others. So, uh, and, and you, you know, the, the, the discussions about human rights, you know, in, in Morocco, if you, if you give a list of topics and you ask a student or even a young scholar, just, you know, check the anthropological objects, your book wouldn't be classified as an anthropological with this, you know, kind of, of, of scheme. So there is this, uh, just we moved from tribal countries, et cetera, to it's not, it's, it's a middle, how to say this in English, ville moyenne, it's middle, middle, middle budget, et cetera. And with Susan Osman, Casablanca. Then you have, because you know, we, anthropologists, the most anthropologists were male, female anthropologists. You know, to my generation, there is 
three or four are. So yes, the studies on women, on, on the Sukh, on Deborah Caption, yes, she, uh, and on, on the language, you know, anthropologist, Moroccan anthropologist, uh, I'm not excluding myself, we use the language in our, you know, encounter ethnographic in, in the field. We used it, we, we should use, we use it, but it was not an object like Becky and like Deborah did. The language is, 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 is in the center. It's not, it's not just a tool. So there, there are many examples, you know, there are many, many examples where, you know, each one, you know, how to say, uh, contribute, you know, in his personal level or institutional level to have variations. We know when, when my students come and say, I want to, 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 to conduct field work on the sacrifice. I say to him, there are many topics. There is only sacrifice. Just choose another topic. And yes, topics might be the prayer. We, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. Uh, we didn't. I, I'm not again exclude myself. We didn't deal with how to say. Canonic Islam, the prayer. It was my project, you know, this two decades ago. What is to pray now, how, how people pray. Uh, and this is a side, I have to say not blind or, uh, or dark side of anthropology, be it American or Moroccan or whatever. So on fasting, on praying, now we have four or five monographs on the pilgrimage, but still nothing on the prayer. Except, of course, but it's not an ethnographic work, except Islam quotidian, where we had we have 20 questions on, on the prayer. But it's not ethnographic, it's some, it's a survey. As all surveys are loose, but so I have a quick question. Oh, um, go ahead, Deborah. Why don't you ask your question and then I'll ask mine. Thank you. And I have to say hello, Hassan, and it's lovely to see you all. And it would uh, be lovely if we could be in person and, and just hang around and talk. I have another meeting that I'm already 10 minutes late for. But I'm wondering, to, uh, I'd love to get your thoughts about uh, ethnography as, as a method um, now in 2022, um, because, you know, Often when we decolonize uh, anthropology, one wonders what's left um, and what wonders, you know, where anthropology is going, what it serves, uh, you know, is it even a, something that um, we need anymore? But then ethnography, it seems to me, as a method um, is something that is extremely, extremely important as a tool of of understanding. And so I just wonder what your thoughts are on that. I agree. I agree. And you know, uh, in the esprit du terrain, the spirit of the field work. When I worked on nationalism, on the history of nationalism, symbolizing the nation. And I was comforted, comforted to, not, you know, to, to many archives, uh, uh, many testimonies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And I used the spirit of the fieldwork in, you know, in, in this perspective. Even if, when I deal with archives, when I deal with secondary documents. I'm trying to be a good ethnographer as far as I can. And you know, we are limited by archives, we are limited by documents, etc. And I'm sensitive to where were the, 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 the gathering of nationalists in the beach? You know, 
normal, a regular historian, and all of them are, are my friends, a regular historian, maybe they would not pay attention to this who was in the pitch. They gathered in the pitch, 1932. Or thanks to thanks to, 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 to Kenneth Brown, who worked on, on Sade, what were the words used by Zawiya, by our Lodge master, to condemn youth nationalists, and so on. And even Afghani, and now, you know, I'm working in Afghani, he has a pipe, has etc. So ethnographic, it's not, well, method or not, we, 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 we can argue about that. But it's just have to understand a situation, to understand an actor. To me, it's a Weberian. You should have the maximum of information about this situation, the maximum of information. To understand why these young people were upset with the Berber decree. What were their network? What was the vocabulary? Did the, the vocabulary wasn't religious at the beginning. At the beginning, the threat was, the colonial threat was understood as a territorial threat, the division of the Moroccan territory. And one of the young said, oh, territory, you know, now Mustafa Kemal, with kind of now, it's 1993, the conceptions of the water, the conceptions of, of the, of the, land, uh, how to say, what the motherland, of the motherland, or fatherland, depends, or fatherland, you know, this is a laic notion, and Moroccan would not be mobilized by this kind of territory, patri, etc. So just, we can, and there was a discussion like this. So the history to me, it's not a line, it's just an autoroute, it's not a highway. And there are discussions, there were a hesitation. This is ethnography to me. We can say a historiography if you like, but have the maximum, try to have the maximum information about actors, how they were dressed, their vocabulary, their interests, their lodging, their parents, etc. the maximum to understand. That's what I did slightly in some words of the some no, I'm going to, to do it. Muhammad Abdu and and uh, and Al Banna and etc. Et Just another way to deal with things that now were familiarized. What should Hassan Rashid may add to what is written on Afghani and yes what I should add in this perspective. How the, in the daily basis, they behave, Muhammad Abdul, et cetera. It's very hard, I know, but this is my perspective. Yeah, great, thanks. No, it's, it's you know, it's, it's amazing, but you know, but I, I have another, another conception of Another conception of it's... Do you read in Arabic? Deborah? Yeah. I mean classical yeah. Arabic? Okay. I, 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 I will, I, I will. No, I, I have two texts in Arabic on, on that, so. Mm -hmm. I have to apologize because I'm 15 minutes late for another meeting, but... <laughs> thank you for joining wonder, us. Wonder, okay. Wonderful to see you all. And thank you so much, Si Hassan. Very <laughs> Sam also, now I see him, I see him smiling. So my question is a bit of a follow-up to, um, to Deborah's, which was, and, and you, um, I, I really like uh, the concept of kind of bringing that ethnographic sensibility to archival work. Um, and you mentioned this in passing, um, you said that you, you you um, brought your deconstruction, um, you brought to your de deconstruction 
this um, the training you had as a field worker, that you started as a field worker and you only came to the kind of deconstruction process later. Um, and I wanted to talk, maybe ask you a little bit more about that because I think it's really important that we don't just stay in the deconstructing the ideological um, phase and do, as you just mentioned, pay attention to the social positionality of scholarship, the, you know, the many hats that and roles that people um, and the audiences that they write for, um, but also, um, you know, the kind of theoretical and the, um, the kind of the, their own cultural um, orientations that, that are implicit in the analytical work that they do. Um, I guess my question, my kind of real question is, is um, what would you recommend to students to gain that ethnographic sensibility that will then help them to understand how to deconstruct or to approach scholarship from these many dimensions? The first recommendation is to do first, what I call in French, I don't, maybe I don't, I don't one, uh, un terrain d'appoint, auxiliary field work. Auxiliary field work, that means that 30% 30, 30 of your material came from the field work and 70% from the library, from archives, whatever. So just don't push them. And this is, it happens in Morocco. The first thesis is, is field work. I, 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 don't, I, I don't agree on that. So the, 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 this is the, the, the first one. The second one is, you know, to the sensibility. It's like, you know, I, 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 I have, I have, I, I have in mind, uh, you know, it, it's an Arabic history. Someone said to a poet, "Please, I, I, I want to be a poet," and he gave him, I don't know, two thousand of, 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 uh, of poems to to learn, and not to learn yet to, to yes, to learn, and to cite by. How to say par cœur? How to say in English? Help me. To memorize and recite by heart. By heart. Yeah, 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 yeah. I have difficulties with that. You know. Okay, you you know what I mean. So he did that. You know, he learned two thousand poems and said, "Now, no, you can go. You can go." This is, this is it. So the second thing is that they should be familiarized with a literature on ethnography, with the best ethnographies. They, they should, you know, comment on that. They should be sensitive on this kind of details, you know, and you show them. Uh, I was in the field with, 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 one, with my, with, with my my students, this is another 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 tool. The sophists call it the sohba, companionship. So to be with with your student in, in in this kind of soft field work, it's not a, it's two days, three days, or four days, and that's it. Two three interviews and so on. So read. You should read ethnographies. I read a lot of ethnographies on African tribes, on African tribes, on Pakistani tribes, etc., etc. But what I learned, it's not only the ethnography. That's what. That's why I, I, I told Deborah that I have another conception. It's not the ethnography. It's how this ethnography is written, interpreted. How the we can see and how. Uh, and I told them how, when describing things, there is something which is theoretical. Yes, I describe, in, you know, in sacrificial rituals. The women do that, the men do that, the young people do that, the adult people do that, etc. But be, beyond that, or behind this, the,
This is possible. This is my, my, my orientation. It's not just ethnography. You know, there are many things to, I'm not a camera to, to, to deal with everything. If the color of, the, of their, 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 their clothes is not relevant, well, it's not relevant. So there is these three things. First, the small and soft, uh, how to say it, uh, and terrain d'appoint, it's an auxiliary, secondary. But it's the, the student get familiarized and he won't be disappointed because if you know the field work, you know, all the thesis, it's about the, his field work. It's, you know, some, sometimes you know people give up. They give up because they have no clue to interpret this, this material. They have materials, but they have no clue to, to interpret. And the company, as you know, you, I, 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 I accompanied my, my students in, in the field two or three days. I just, you know, uh, I remember one, one day I would say it in French, and uh, because it was in French, I don't know the, the expression in, in, in English. And uh, the students came, it was with uh, Lausen, we're talking about collaboration, it was with Lausen. University, they came with their students, Monia Sharebi and other scholars. And they came with the students and our students. And there, there is a couple, you know, Moroccan, from, from Morocco and from Switzerland. And one of the questions was how to avoid La Langue de Bois? Because they were, they, they were, they were interviewing officials. And my answer was, how do you avoid une question de bois? So they return back and they start, at, as, as, as I did, you know, uh, stories, stories, tell me stories, uh, you know, narratives, 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 instead of, you know, uh, interviewing persons by, you know, posing questions, just I, I, I find clues, you know, it's something which, which we cannot, we, we cannot, we, we, we cannot teach, you know. Uh, just have the clue to, to push your interlocutor to speak about 15 minutes or 30 minutes or something like that, questions like this. And they came afterwards and said, oh, you're right. We didn't, you know, what is your conception of this, etc. Just what are you, what you tell, tell us we, your projects from the beginning to the end. And they, get, they got answers without asking. And this is ethnography. When you get answers without asking people. Oh, there, there, there are many things. I'm, I, I'm, I'm preparing a, a book on that, Pratique le terrain. I, you know, I, 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 I work like this, you know, four, four years for a book and four years for another book, etc. So it, uh, this is okay. The, the book, you know, get mature like this. Just Give them, give, give them, but you should give them the app at, at, at a stage, it's a good stage, you know, it's not. Does it answer Vicky, your question? Yes, yes, you've given lots of suggestions about how to do that, thank you. But read it, you, sh you should push them to, to, to read monographs and to comment these monographs, the limits, et cetera, et cetera, and what is behind this and how, you know, the theoretical of Marinovsky or whatever, or whoever, is articulated to his ethnography. You know, I, 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 I always, you know, uh, get fan of my colleagues, my political scientists. I told them historians have historiography. Sociologists have sociography. Anthropologists have ethnography. You didn't have politography. Oh, 
they have should, statistics. They should invent polytography. They don't have polytography. <laughs> this creation is from the sky, as we say in Morocco, from from the uh, from the, the the fly or from the. So yes, this is. Uh, I, I agree with Clifford Gills. This is our workshop. We don't have other workshops than, than ethnography. Thank you. Thank you so much. Are there any other questions? They had have many questions, but <laughs> inputs, just inputs, not output. <laughs> Kate, please ask a question. Okay. Um, yeah, so I actually, this is a two part question. Um, some of it, I, going back to David's original question, I was, I would be interested in the clarification of the various ideologies, the colonial ideologies, and understanding whether the Arabic is different than the nationalist, could be different than the, the recent imperialist, um, but then obviously the French. And, and really this question, you know, my, I'm, I, don't, I think it's probably too much for you to do <laughs> in a few minutes. Um, but what I'm, I'm coming as a linguistic anthropologist like Becky, um, but I study French uh, colonialism in French Polynesia. I'm sorry? It was interrupted a bit. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, so I was, I, I was wondering about clarifying maybe the Arabic ideology the French ideology, the nationalist ideology, and possibly the imperialist ideology okay. that David was asking about. But I wanted to explain why I was asking this question is because I'm a linguistic anthropologist who studies French Polynesia. And so I'm very interested in the French, the imposition of French ideologies through French education. And because I was, I was listening to you as a, I, I was, I wanted to ask whether you think that your style of communication in a, you know, in a official presentation like this, do you think it's more shaped by French ideologies, French educational um, forms? Because it, it reminds me of that. Or is there is there an Arabic ideology that shapes the way you present? Um, the reason I think it's it's very French is because of um, you know being very abstract uh, and and giving us lots of ab abstract de definitions, um, which from long experience with French intellectuals, <laughs> I, I you know I'm I'm. I, I recognize that, and I'm I'm wondering whether whether you have a perspective on your own formation, formation. That's, you know. a, that's a very hard question. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, maybe. No, no, no don't be sorry. I'm, I, I'm glad to answer it. I would be glad to answer it. Uh, you know, as I said earlier. You are talking about my, let's say, cultural, social identity. Is that true? Okay. I'm a Berber. I'm Amazon. You, so you forget this dimension, but you don't know it. So uh, I, there is in in uh, in uh, YouTube, you know, in well, there was eighty episodes in YouTube where I translated into videos, you know, there's interviews, and documentary, how to say the documentary film, something like that. And I was describing the influence of my mother, of my father, on my anthropological, you know, uh, approach. So 
this has nothing to do with formal education. This just informal education, socialization. I've been nurtured like this. My mother, the imagination, folk tales. My father, who was, you know, uh, a scholar, if you like, in, in Arabic. It's to note, I, 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 I was 16 or something like that, and I have a notebook where I wrote, you know, this is, I was ill of that, and I saw that, and because my father has, you know, this kind of agendas, pocket agendas, where he noted everything. You know, our circumcision, the hour, etc., etc. So I, I, I can speak of that. I, I spoke of that in, 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 not in my book, because in my book I, I didn't, uh, I, I didn't, uh, I did not deal with my family, with my socialization. But in these videos, yes, I ask myself: You have this biography. Is that there is raptures like this? or there is something continuities. Well, this is the family side. Now, when it comes to French side or English side, or uh, there is another, an, 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 another, you know, an, another space of sociology in my life, I, you know, it's like, you know, the, how to say the, 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 this ethnography? Street corner? Street corner? We have street corners. Derp, you know, you, you know. And this is another kind of sociology. So uh, I have many spaces. Family, the school, the derp, street corner. And as I was militant, etc., Marxist, etc., there were some other spaces, cine club and, and so on. So it's a mixture, it's a mis salad misoise. And I, I, I would be artificial if I said, this is influencing me, oriented me to this way, to this way. I believe that secondary socialization is stronger than primary socialization. And I believe that, my, that, that, that Hassan Rashid as an anthropologist is more stronger than French school or whatever. Because I reflect, I'm not, I'm not, I reflect, this is, with Arabic it's the same. I, uh, I was good in Arabic, uh, my French was, you know, because of, this kind of strikes, 1971, 1972, there was a lot of strikes. We didn't get to school, we were just outside, you know, demonstrating, etc. So my French was very, very loose. And, but I, I, I choose, uh, 19, I was in England for three, for three, for three, for three, for three months. I have many windows. And it depends on the context. This is my, my, my conception of my identity. It's contextual identity, conceptual. It's soft identity. That means that this context maybe uh, will be more Arabic because I'm talking with Palestinians. Well, I can feel them. I can, I can feel Mohammed Darwish. I can feel Fadwa uh, Tawqa. Uh, this is, I, I've, I've been nurtured in, in, in this. But I can also, uh, I can, I, I can also be happy with with Moliere or with Shakespeare or with etc. Um, no, I, I have no, I have no three or four windows. I have many windows. So it depends on the situation. It depends on the situation. Edgar Poe, you know, uh, Steinbeck, uh, American uh, movies, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, so. I'm nowhere, or at least I try to be nowhere, <laughs> and somewhere according to, to the situations. With Susan, with, with Susan Osman, you know, uh, what, uh, uh, Susan Slimovic, Susan Osman is not here. With Susan Slimovic, you know, uh, her, her book, maybe I can read her, her book on uh, 
uh, remember the memory of the Palestinian memory of the Titan? So the Rusman, the Titan was memory of the object of me object of memory. So uh, I guess I I can feel better her book than a non-Arabist. Well, I, 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 I feel that. I, I don't know. I don't know. So, no, uh, uh, so I'm not Cartesian, you know, this kind of, you know, this French culture. Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm not. I try to, to not be there in this. Uh, I like write like Americans, sober. No food artifice, as French did <laughs> or do. You know, this kind of adjectives, three adjectives, and so on. Le jeu est l'enjeu, Pierre Bourdieu, le jeu est l'enjeu. I, I, I don't like it. So, and, but I like, I understand in French, you know, this kind of critics, I, I, there are many aspects. That's Thank it. you so very much. Um, and I appreciate I, 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 I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for your questions. And I know we could continue the discussion longer um, and um, perhaps we'll have to arrange a different time to do so um, because oh, we do have expected really. Thank you so very much for taking the time. Um, I, I have to actually go to another event, uh, another class, um, but uh, again, thank you so very much everyone for being present and for asking the questions and for participating. Um, and uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor Rashik, for your insights into kind of thinking about decolonizing anthropological knowledge. Bye-bye. See you, see you soon. See you soon. Inshallah. Inshallah. <laughs>